Welcome once again to Spotlight Indian River. We're so happy that you'll join us again. And I only hope that you are, are gathering some important information to help you to focus more on some positive things that are happening here in our county of Indian River. But not only in Indian River, our surrounding counties as well. So if you know some positive things that are happening in your community, in your city, in your area of residence, please do not hesitate to give me a call at 772 794-1005, extension 234. I'll repeat that number again, 772-794-1005, extension 234. Again, we wanna hear those, those great spotlight events. What's going on? What makes you happy? What makes you uh, so joyous to be a, a part of this great county that we live in? I once again have, a, have another distinguished guest with me, and her name is Miss Judith Evans. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Welcome. To, thank you ha for having me. You know, I'm glad to, <laughs> glad, glad to have you on here because I, I enjoy people. As I talked to you earlier and in, in other instances, I pick up a, a spirit of a, a passion. And to me, that's a quality a person must have when they do any type of humanitarian services uh, within the community or, or at the community at large. So I'm happy to know that Judith has that, that spirit of, uh, of passion and compassion, which helped to elevate her to a level of seriousness when it comes to serving the individuals that she come in contact with. So Judith, I, I want you to just tell me something about yourself, what agency you are affiliated with, and we'll move from there. Well, I am a victim advocate. I have been a victim advocate for the past approximately 12 years. I work for a wonderful organization that serves the Treasure Coast, uh, Indian River, Martin, and St. Lucie counties called Safe Space. Mm -hmm. It's a domestic violence program, the only certified domestic violence program on the Treasure Coast. The only one? Yes, the only one. So you, you know it's ironic that you would think that there would be more uh, uh, availability of agencies of that type, type if, if they recognize the seriousness of the problem that we have, and you're the only one. We're the only certified one. Mm -hmm. There are uh, plenty of agencies that want to assist individuals in need, but as far as domestic violence goes, we would be the only certified, certified. agency. Mm -hmm. So that, again, that goes to, to going beyond the call of duty. I, I know you want those other agencies not knocking in the agencies by, by no means, but I'm saying when you go to that extra level of becoming certified, that means you want to make sure you're in compliance, make sure you're doing the right thing, saying the right things, going to the right places. I mean, I mean it's, it's a lot, I'm sure. Definitely. Uh, just how in depth is that certification process? Well, we're certified by the Florida Coalition Against Domestic Violence, and when we say certified, that means we can offer victims, survivors of domestic violence, certain types of pro protections, which cover privilege and confidentiality. So when they speak with a certified advocate, what they say is confidential. So that protection is very, very important in the minds of those individuals. And to make sure that yes. what they say to you is confidential, that it's not going to be all over town, yes. and people hearing it through the grapevine. Exactly. Uh, very, very, exactly. Very, very important. And that, that to me and myself, I, I don't want to uh, skirt across that too quickly, um, but confidentiality is a very, very important ingredient in any relationship, yeah. uh, whether it's a friendship, whether it's uh, services to an agency, agencies to an individual, it's very important that that confidentiality remains very, very private. We're gonna take a break and we're gonna come back once again and we're gonna talk about how that confidentiality will help a person to open up, yeah. how to know that I found a friend, mm -hmm. I have someone I can really trust. We're gonna talk more about confidentiality when we return, stay tuned. Join Marsha Littlejohn nightly at 5 and 9 on ViroBuzzTV.com. Stop dirty, unread newsprint clogging our landfills with waste. Go green. Save a tree. Watch Buzz TV. Hi, I'm Carolyn. And I'm Jim. Together we are the Live Now real estate team at Remax Associated Realty. We know the Sebastian area real estate market very well. And we also know that buying or selling a home can be very serious business. But together we can reduce the stress and even have fun in the process. Along with our hundreds of satisfied clients, we really want you to live now and be happy too. Contact us at thelivenowteam.com. See you soon. Welcome back once again. We are here with Ms. Judith Evans. and She's with Safe Space. Even the, even the name has a ring to it because it kind of describes in a nutshell what that agency is all about. Number one, it's safe and it's a space that's confidential that no one will come to hurt you. 
we protect you. We, we hold your information that you share with us in confidence. So let's talk more about that confidentiality in that safe space. Okay. Well, basically, when we say the word confidentiality, it covers us just like a lawyer and client okay. or doctor and patient. Uh, when individuals come to us and they're talking about such intimate details of their life, their relationships, and they're telling us about the trauma that they've endured, a lot of individuals want to know that what they're saying to us stays with us. Now, we do have to follow mandated reporting um, policies. So if child abuse is reported, uh, abuse on a disabled individual okay. or elderly, we would have to break that confidentiality. So you, so you have an obligation yes. when it comes to that, that level yes. of information. Mm -hmm. Now, how difficult is it for you to paint the picture of safe, protection, confidentiality, how difficult or not, maybe not difficult, to get that person to open up and trust and share that information? Well, it's all about establishing rapport, meeting them where they're comfortable, um, getting them to tell you their story, reassuring them that you're there to assist them and that what you say um, and what they say stays between the two of you um, and that you're only there to help, that you're not going to use the information to hurt them. And when we talk about confidentiality, it's very, very important. And as we were discussing how important it is for us to get that person to open up. Sort of like an onion, I, best example I can think about. And I look at that onion, it has layer after layer after layer. And most of those layers are pretty symmetrical as far as the, la the layer that it came off of. is either that around is there and this one around there. So I'm, sh I'm looking at the, that individual when they call you and say, I'll contact you and say, I have a problem. Mm -hmm. And I need you to come to my house. I need you to come and speak with me. What would you tell that person? Well, we would assess um, their situation and find out what their basic needs are. If someone wants to go into shelter, we would meet them at shelter. Um, we would give them the means to get there or connect them with law enforcement or figure out how they would arrive there. Some individuals choose to meet us on an outreach basis. We do not visit homes, but we will meet someone in a public safe okay. setting. Okay, that's, that's, that's a very important point. I want the audience to hear that coming from the professional that you, they want to resolve your situation and help you and aid you in any way they can, but they don't want to endanger you any further, neither do you want to endanger those professionals when they come out. We're going to take another break and come back talk more with Ms. Judith Evans about this great agency, Safe Space, Domestic Violence Intervention. Stay tuned. Stop dirty, unread newsprint clogging our landfills with waste. Go green. Save a tree. Watch Buzz TV. The fun is happening at Vero Social Club on North US 1, where friends meet for bingo every Tuesday and Thursday. Doors open at 10 with lunch and serve, and the games begin at noon. Then Vero Social Club opens up the dance floor. Thursday nights for social dancing. And weekends, Vero Social Club eats up. Check the website for Latin night special events. And each Sunday, dance to hip hop all night long. Go to VeroSocialClub.com. Vero's number one party destination. Vero Social Club, 7500 North US 1. Attention, this important message is for any American who is about to turn 65 years of age or older. Nation's Helpline has Medicare Supplement Insurance news that may benefit you, your family, or someone you know. Most Americans who are about to turn 65 years old know they need Medicare Supplement Insurance, even if they already have Medicare. The Nation's Helpline Medicare Supplement team can guide you and help answer your Medicare questions. Call today. Please call 800-632-2804. We are talking with Ms. Judith Evans as we took a break just now, and I want to get right back into the meat of things and, and just tell me why was this organization formed and why do they feel what they offer as a service is so necessary? Well, unfortunately, domestic violence is everywhere. It's in every community. Um, so there is a crucial need for domestic violence agencies. We are one of many, but we are the only one in the Treasure Coast. This agency aids men, women, and children who are victims of domestic violence. Okay, that's, that's, that's very good you brought that up. Not only women, 
but also children as well as men. Yes. And many people think it's just a, 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 the women that are being victimized, but there are obviously some instances where, where a, a man was victimized also. Mm -hmm. So that's very important. So guys, don't be afraid, don't be reluctant to bring your situation to the forefront so that someone can help guide you out into a safe environment. My next question is a very simple question, and you kind of touched on it, but I'm gonna go back and make sure it's clarified for the viewing audience. And that is, is there any economic factors that decide whether or not on this level, on that level, on this level, whether you make little money, uh, moderate money, a lot of money, rich, does that make any difference as far as the domestic violence situations occurring? I'd like to say no, because uh, in, in my own words, I think domestic violence is blind. Okay. It, it doesn't see how much money you make, what race, what gender or background you come from. It can affect anyone, um, anywhere. You could make a tremendous amount of money and you could be homeless and you could still okay. be affected by domestic violence. Now, take, for instance, an individual who is homeless and he has a fiance and, and they've been together for years. Uh, before they became homeless, though, they were a pretty good couple financially, uh, things that they wanted, they pretty much purchased. But all of a sudden, his job was terminated, her job laid her off, now they find themselves homeless. Does that frustration sometimes cause a little bit, bit of uh, what you call uh, agitation between the two? I think any stressors in life can cause agitation in a relationship, but it would not cause domestic violence. I okay. think that's an underlying factor that's already there. Um, many of us face the same barriers or financial obstacles or housing situations, and we make a choice mm -hmm. to not abuse our partner. Exactly, that's a very good answer. <laughs> I, I like it because when it did, it, it, it pushed aside the thought that when I lost something, that caused the domestic violence right. to occur. That's not the case. Uh, like the old saying said, what's in you? will come out of you. Yes. It is not the financial part that caused that to happen. Any Anything that, that the community can do to be uh, a partner in more in-depth partnership. I, mean, I, I know what we're doing here now as a community-minded station here is helping the community to become educated and aware of this, this dilemma that we have in, in, in our community. But I, I want you to gather some thoughts in your head and kind of list a few things that you, you consider to be uh, positive things that we can contribute as a community, as a layperson, to what your agency is doing, okay? So mm -hmm. try to gather your thoughts. And we're gonna take another break and we're gonna come back and talk more with Ms. Judith Evans about this great uh, activity uh, that they are doing and the services that they are providing in our community. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Join us for an adventure weekday at 4.30 and 8.30 on Buzz TV Network. If you or someone you love is suffering from addiction to drugs or alcohol, National Rehab Recovery has an important message for you. Each year, we lose hundreds of thousands of our family members and loved ones to drug and alcohol-induced causes. If you have insurance or the ability to pay for 30 days of treatment, National Rehab Recovery can change your life. Medicare and Medicaid are not accepted at this time. The call and confidential consultation is free. 1-800-577-5446. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Hi, I'm Penny Chandler. I'm, I'm Freddie Woolfolk. I am Barbara Hoffman. And I'm Gregory Simpson. I'm here with Police Chief David Curry. You're in good company on VeroBuzzTV.com. Vero Beach's local TV station on the internet. I just love, love it. it. Tell a friend. We love y'all! We're back once again, and I tell you, I'm, I'm being educated. I'm being uh, shifted in my way of thinking and thinking that poverty or uh, financial uh, uh, downfall, whatever you may call it that, uh, losing your house, losing your car, that those factors were, were, were paramount when it came to a person acting in, in a domestic violent type fashion. But I'm being told by the professional, Ms. Judith Evans, that that's not the case. It's across the board. It, it, it's something that a person can have within them even before those, any of those instances that I mentioned earlier take place. But what I want to know, if that's the case, 
then what can we do as a community to be more proactive to and not react to situation, but be proactive to the situation? What can we do as a community to circumvent some of these, these uh, situations from occurring? Well, I think first and foremost, as a community, we need to pull together and not make it such a taboo issue to talk about. Um, domestic violence can touch anyone, anyone's family member, anyone's friends. So it's important that we take a stand and we speak out against it. We become informed, we become knowledgeable about the resources out there. We direct people to the agencies that can properly help them and assist individuals who are trying to survive domestic violence. Um, it's taking a stand and saying we will not tolerate violence of any form, whether it's verbal, financial, physical, psychological. And knowing what the community has to offer is key in that so that you can point that individual to the right services. That last statement you made is so crucial. Um, somewhere, I think, in the Bible, in the scriptures, say, my people perish for the lack of knowledge. My people perish for the lack of knowledge. And so that means that someone has not passed down the information needed to, to remedy that situation. So you mentioned earlier when you began to talk about this, you said, we need to talk more. Yeah. We need to communicate more. And, it, it, and it, it helps us to share information, but it also helps us to build relationships because I've learned that the more I know you, Judith, and each time I meet you and we talk, I get to know more about you and I hope the same about me. Then a relationship begins and I'm more apt to be in tune to what your mindset is, what your train of thoughts are and what you're planning. And you said another thing is that even if safe space do not have that services, uh, service that that person is looking for, they have a, a, a pulse on the, on the community resources that they can refer the individuals to. Maybe something completely out of the realm yeah. of what you offer. Am I correct? That is correct. Okay. So it, it's very crucial that we share information and, and refer individuals so they can receive the services. I have um, been a prime example in quite, for, for quite some time. I don't know everything. I don't know where you can find everything. But I have a list of services that I can pull out, and the top of that is 211. I call 211 in a minute, you know, and share it with individuals. So, have you called 211? I know I never heard of that. I heard of 911. No, this is different. I heard of 411. No, it's different. <laughs> 211. And then they realize I'm trying to give them some information. Yeah. So, that's very important. So, again, communication is the key, talking to one another, understanding that if you call an agent such, such as such Safe Space, you're at least going to get what you're looking for from them. Are you going to be steered or guided to that place where you can find what you're in search of? We're going to take another break and come back and talk more with Ms. Judith Evans about this great endeavor called Safe Space. Stay tuned. See Arts in Depth with Barbara Hoffman, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 and 10 p.m. Stop by Patty's Printing and Graphics. In downtown Vero Beach, owner Patty Callahan prints it all. From color and black and white copies to blueprints, banners, signs, prints of paintings, and fine art. Patty makes restorations and creates outstanding graphic designs. Call Patty at 770-1521 or stop by Patty's Printing and Graphics at 2345 14th Avenue. Stop by for all of your printing needs at Patty's Printing and Graphics across from the old railroad station in downtown Vero Beach. Attention, this important message is for any American who is about to turn 65 years of age or older. Nation's Helpline has Medicare Supplement Insurance news that may benefit you, your family, or someone you know. Most Americans who are about to turn 65 years old know they need Medicare Supplement Insurance, even if they already have Medicare. The Nation's Helpline Medicare Supplement Team can guide you and help answer your Medicare questions. Call today. Please call 800-632-2804. Welcome back to Spotlight in the River. We're spotlighting a very significant agency today called Safe Space, and we have as our guest, Ms. Judith Evans. And we've, we've been talking about various components that make uh, this process viable and as well as successful. Those are two important terms, and viable to show there's importance. If we gotta have this. It's not just gonna go away on its own and success. The success is very important because a person knows there's a beginning and there's an end. There's a going through and there's a going to. 
I like that one. That's, that's a good one there. <laughs> there's a going through and there's a going to. And that person must be assured that surely you, you're going to have to go through this process. You can't stay in the situation that you're in because it's going to continue to fester and continue to permeate to a level that is going to go out of control. Also, so you got, you got to go through it and, and realize it's time for me to get out of here and move uh, and change my location, change my environment to move to where I want to be. Is there some type of uh, profile survey that you do to kind of gather uh, what that person's frame of mind is from inception to what that person's mind is when they leave, like a pre-survey and a post-survey. Is there anything of that nature? Yes, we actually do for any of our groups that we facilitate or classes. Even when we're working with somebody who comes into shelter or starts outreach services, we do provide a pre and post survey. Good, good. Mm -hmm. So you want to know where that person, and each person is different. Yes. You can't use the same uh, approach on me that you may use on, on another person. So you go Correct. on that person's level and, and work from there. So that's very important. That, that way you are able to move them from where they are in that negative situation They get them started moving towards where they want to be. Now, in that survey, another question, uh, is there goals that you ask them to, to set for themselves and you work with them to achieve those goals? Do they give you some goals that they're they are, uh, in search of? Most definitely. We will ask them what goals that they have in mind, what is it they'd like to okay. achieve, and the obstacles that they may have faced that might have been a barrier for them to achieve those goals. Is there a graduation? Um, a graduation is uh, anyone who has successfully uh, obtained their goals or moved on and found themselves a safe new location or a, an okay. environment that's free from uh, free from violence. Now, is there any instances, I'm just, used, I'm, I'm getting excited when I get excited, I ask a lot of questions. <laughs> is there any instances where alumni, a person who has been through your program is willing to come to the safe space and speak to an individual who is a little frantic, a little unnerved, but need someone to reassure them who's been through the process. We have had survivors come back and do presentations, um, events, and sometimes they will speak up during our support groups and say, you know, I've, I've made it through here. These were my struggles. You can too. So it's, it's very crucial to have someone who's actually made it to the opposite end of the the spectrum, if that, you will. That, that is great because as they say in church, they say no test. Yeah. No testimony. Right. So you've been through it. You, you, you've seen where you were, but now you're able to share with someone else, this is where you're going to be one day. And that person perks up and feel good about themselves. Yes. We're going to take another break, and we're going to come back and wrap it up. As we are taking this station break, think of anything that you want to share as a closing statement, okay? okay. We're going to take another break and come back and talk more with Ms. Judith Evans. Stay tuned. Buzz TV Network is now the fastest growing new media outlet on the Space and Treasure Coast. Follow Buzz TV Network and tell a friend. The fun is happening at Vero Social Club on North US 1, where friends meet for bingo every Tuesday and Thursday. Doors open at 10 with lunch and serve, and the games begin at noon. Then Vero Social Club opens up the dance floor. Thursday nights for social dancing. And weekends, Vero Social Club heats up. Check the website for Latin night special events. And each Sunday, dance to hip hop all night long. Go to VeroSocialClub.com. Vero's number one party destination. Vero Social Club, 7500 North US 1. During the course of the past 100 years, advancements in technology have dramatically changed forever the manner in which people worldwide interact and now connect and communicate with one another. Welcome, Buzz TV. We're back once again with Ms. Judith Evans, and she's with Safe Space. And, and we've been having a great, great conversation of how individuals can seek help, seek referrals, seek direction, and be able to what? Rearrange their lives for the better. So I want to come back to you because we talked about some things, how uh, there are agencies out there, there's community help through partnerships and proactive measures that the community can do. But I'm sure there are some events along the way during the course of the year that you have already planned, say, we're going to have XYZ here this month and XYZ here that month. What are some forthcoming uh, events that you're planning? 
One that stands out is one of our largest events that we do, and it's called Every Woman is My Sister. Mm. And it's actually going to take place uh, February 29th. If you need more details, you would like to purchase a ticket or become um, part of that event, you can contact our administration office at 772-223-2399. We also have various events throughout the year. Um, the next one that I can think of will take place in February because it mm -hmm. is Teen Dating Violence Month. Um, okay. So we don't have the specifics on that, but Definitely, Same we'll have day. something, yeah. yes, yeah. coming yeah. Uh, for that. Okay, very good. So we want to make sure that you you jot down your, your calendar, save that date, and that's coming up on February 29th in Stewart. And I'm sure that you can be able to, be able to call that number, 772-223-2399, to get more information. As a wrap-up, individual has been uh, involved in your agencies not now. Do you have a particular in time and a graduation time or time that they leave from intake to when they leave. Is there any specific time that's been allocated? So you, you must get it together within three months, two months, whatever. We do have a general time frame for our outreach services. An individual can come to us for as long as they choose. Um, if they're coming into emergency shelter because it is an emergency shelter, the average stay can be anywhere from six to eight weeks. Okay. Um, but every situation is assessed on an individual basis. So some can be as short as three weeks? If that's what they need, yes. Okay, so you don't necessarily have to go six to eight no. weeks. And that's, that again shows you that they have a personalized plan for each individual. Nothing etched in stone. They give you an opportunity to come in according to your length of time that you need to be there. And that, that's very, very rewarding to hear. I, lastly, I always just want to say that, that these type of programs that are offered by Safe Space are paramount. They must be looked at as you look at any other serious situation in our community, whether it's crime, whether it's domestic violence, whether it's uh, robbery, rape, any of those, got to be serious about it. So it's not something, as I said earlier, that's just going to go away. Right. We have to work together and work on it. So I want to say once again, thank you so much thank for being on the show. Me. And it's been a fantastic opportunity to learn more about Safe Space. And to you, our viewing audience, as I always say to you, you can either be a part of the problem or you can be a part of the solution. We want you to be a part of the solution. So until next time, hug somebody that you meet. Tell them they can be the best that they can be if they try. And if they need your help, you're there to assist them. That's what Safe Space does. That's what you can do too. So stay tuned till next time. See ya. Have a great day. Freddie Wilfrick and Gregory Simpson invite you to Spotlight Indian River weeknights at 6.30 and 10.30. Have you or a loved one been prescribed the blood thinner medication Xarelto? Xarelto has been linked to serious injuries, including internal bleeding of the brain or gastrointestinal system, cerebral hemorrhage, and even death. At the law offices of Jacoby and Myers, we've been bringing compassion and experience to our clients for over 40 years. Jacoby and Myers is now taking claims from those injured as a result of taking Xarelto. You won't pay a thing unless your case is settled. Please call 800-536-6093. The fun is happening at Vero Social Club on North US 1, where friends meet for bingo every Tuesday and Thursday. Doors open at 10 with lunch and serve, and the games begin at noon. Then Vero Social Club opens up the dance floor. Thursday nights for social dancing. And weekends, Vero Social Club eats up. Check the website for Latin night special events. And each Sunday, dance to hip hop all night long. Go to VeroSocialClub.com. Vero's number one party destination. Vero Social Club, 7500 North US 1. During the course of the past 100 years, advancements in technology have dramatically changed forever the manner in which people worldwide interact and now connect and communicate with one another. Welcome, Buzz TV.